Thanks. Uh, first, congratulate, of course, to Jos Press for uh, the 35th anniversary, and thanks for inviting me, me to speak here. Um, it's a great honor. Um, I'm a simple uh, human geographer. Um, I did nothing in uh, publishing in a very scientific way, I think. I'm also looking backwards a bit uh, in what was presented during the earlier sessions today. And I feel a bit um, strange in a way that I think I'm going backwards. Because what you have showed, what the guys uh, before the break have shown is very advanced. Uh, it also focuses on specific, a very small domain, I think. And what I am doing with the Statistical Journal of the International Association of Official Statistics, I'm focusing on the whole world. Uh, if I show you the five manuscripts that during the last four hours came on still the MS Tracker and Editorial Manager desk, then you can see the why things. I'm talking about SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. I'm talking about wine yards in Armenia. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking about statistical literacy and uh, artificial intelligence. I'm talking about the business cycle clock, for example, in the European business. So those are topics which are covered by the International Journal, which is then the Showers Statistical Journal of the International Association for Official Statistics. Um, OK, let me try to use this. So the content of my presentation, uh, what is official statistics? I will try to explain it to you. I will talk a bit about the science, the publishing changes that I see. It's a personal view. I will talk about the role of science publishing in official statistics, but as I already remarked, I think science publishing is maybe not the correct word. It's publishing in official statistics, and part of it is maybe science. A lot of it is very practical. It's very policy uh, and evidence-based decision-making oriented. Uh, I will then tell you a bit how these developments impact uh, the publishing and official statistics, and I will try to conclude with some uh, issues that help us to stay in the forefront of publishing and official statistics. Uh, the team, what's the impact of the current and upcoming developments in official statistics in science publishing in this domain? Of course, this between brackets, the issue of science publishing. Let me first tell you what uh, official statistics is. Um, it's a very diverse domain. In fact, official statistics we see everywhere. If we talk about the amount of money that the European Union has to pay for the gas that comes from Russia, then we are talking about a statistical figure which is based on official statistics based on a calculation by the member states' national statistical institutes, eventually together with international statistical organizations, about how much cubic meters of gas is used by private households, how much cubic meters of gas is used by industry, what comes from where, what comes from Norway, what comes from other areas, what comes from Russia. These are official statistics. They make our life. They are essential for democratic societies. Trustful, authoritative statistics, where, and as they are used in managing, managing the world around us and managing our societies. Of course, one of the big events which was already mentioned earlier, the fall of the Berlin Water War and what happened before, shows the difference between statistics in a democratic, free society and, of course, in the societies which were part of the former Soviet republics, where statistics were made up. And of course, this already touches on an important issue in official statistics, statistics to be made up, fake news, misuse of statistics. I will come back to that later. So what is official statistics? The data collected by government departments in the course of their work, which is routine, uh, or collected specifically for statistical uh, purposes. And they are of utmost importance for social, environmental, cultural, business developments. The EAOS, by the way, uh, earlier I think uh, one of you showed, I think it was I know even, showed this, this block of what were the journals in uh, 1987. And in the right upper hand there was a black box 
Uh, it was, in fact, a black box which said Statistical Journal of the International Association of Official Statistics, which was two years older than EOS Press. And it is already one of the journals which is in uh, EOS Press from the beginning. Um, the EAOS, the International Association, is an association under the ISI, the International Statistical Institute, which uh, exists since 1868. And the EAOS, one of those sections, was only launched officially in 1992. So after that, the journal, which was called before the Journal of the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe, was already launched. But the EOS has as an important goal to promote the understanding of official statistics, and it's very much related to this issue about free democratic societies and the use of trustful authoritative statistics for managing societies. So what are then the characteristics of the showers? It's a flagship journal of the EOS. It's printed and online. We have about 70,000 visits uh, in 2021, which is quite a lot, if I tell you later about the many of people that we have in our network. The type of uh, manuscripts, they vary. I already uh, showed you in the beginning some examples. What we are talking about is governance in statistics, methodology, procedures, but also examples like those vineyards in Armenia, <laughs> which we are talking about. But also the effects of, for example, uh, school performance measurement in Tanzania. So it's a very wide field that we are covering. The next one. So. A second set, we have a global reader and authorship. And the journal is unique in the English language. There's no real competitor with this journal. And um, the authorship, especially the last couple of years, is really global. We have um, about 25 to 30 percent of our readers and authors are from outside the traditional, so to say, OECD region. They're coming from Africa, they're coming from China, they come from Latin America and Asia. We have some uh, which are related, um, but as I already showed you in the examples, we are covering a lot of domains, from crime to health to employment. So, and on the other side, methodology, survey-based, new data sources-based, governance, a lot of fields that we are covering. So there are not many journals that are immediately covering the same, but we have a lot of related econometrics, uh, health statistics, or uh, crime statistics, which are specialized in that specific field, but without this idea of impacting policymaking. So the impacting of policymaking, the fact that in the articles that we publish, there should be at the end, in the conclusions or in the setup of the article, something that says, Policymakers, if you see this, you can use it as such a such, of use this as a good example of how you can apply this kind of methods in your own society, in your own business. So that differs, that distinguishes the journal from, for example, the journal on official statistics, which is purely based on methodology, or another couple that I can mention. So we are in a unique playing field between academics, academic researchers, statistical production guys, and policymakers. And the only way I can tell you a bit about how many they are is in this field of statistical production. To give you for the European Union, we calculated that there are in the European Union member states, 28 at that moment, plus seven candidate countries, and the European Statistical Institute, Eurostat, that we had about 50,000 people working on official statistics. So 50,000, and you can uh, generalize it for the whole world, so we're not talking about the very big community. This 50,000 people in the European Union, they cost in salary about three, three, four billion euros. So for three to four billion euros, there's a lot of official statistics made that will generate, and that is the generation factor, a lot of extra money by having an efficient society, a democratic society, a social correct society. So the costs are relatively low. If you know that the, that the uh, accelerator in Geneva and CERN, that that thing costs also more than three 
billion euro per year. And for 3 billion euro, we are collecting a very wide variety, a golden mountain of data on Europe. But okay. Um, <laughs> the policymakers, we of course do not know really what the amount of policymakers is that is using our data, because a lot of them are, of course, via departments, via ministries, via people that use the data in their academic publications, and then it goes to policymakers to see what is the impact if we do this on the satisfaction of our population, on health, on climate, on the things that relate between them. Academic statistics, academic working on official statistics is difficult also to define because many are working in a specific field of inferential statistics or survey methods or those kind of uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning. They are specialized in those areas and in having their input into how we can use those methods in production, they are also involved in official statistics. Oh. Ah, nice. So this is again, academic statistics are a branch of mathematics, uh, and you see it in many universities. Policy making is the formulation of ideas and plans that are used by organizations or governments as a basis for making decisions. Evidence-based decision making was such a term that was alive. In. Statistical production is an activity that carries out this uh, information system, collecting data, analyzing, etc. So. If I look now, what are the changes in science publishing in general? What already has been discussed, I think, uh, very in detail during the last uh, two hours. Digitization in a range of um, formats. And of course, these are my own interpretation about what's happening. Fragmentation resulting from specialization. So as we have a lot of new fields and domains developing, maybe berries is also such a specialization, and we see that in those specific fields, there needs to be some work done. Integration approaches based on keywords, and I think the methodologies that have been this, uh, presented earlier are also using, maybe not keywords, but nanotechnology or nano definitions to also uh, show the integration um, as a key to combine uh, results. Keywords, and that's, I think, an essential classification element, especially when you are going into much more fragmentation than keywords is more important. Open and easy access, turnaround times to be shortened because you need to have the data and the information now and not tomorrow. Uh, speed in aging of manuscripts. Maybe some manuscripts, they can live for many years, but with developing societies in a certain speed, of course, some of the things, they stay valid, but many other things are, after a couple of years, no more valid, so the speed needs to be high. And of course, a global audience. Uh, and um, because I think there are no language differences anymore, because we simply can translate or use translation machines, even when sometimes the homologies and other things might make it difficult, we can simply translate into different languages, uh, from different languages into the English. So, what is then the role of science publishing in official statistics? And this is the S is situation. So, very much uh, for knowledge development. So a broad set of domains, and one of the aims, clearly, of the role of publishing, showers, is this knowledge development. A second, and that's a specific aim, of course, is that we want to focus on innovation. We try to work on the edge. But sometimes, of course, you are repeating things as examples, using best examples to work based on that, working on the edge, but of course, also artificial intelligence, machine learning, the use of um, machines that create data, for example, that can be used for the analysis, is of course also something that is more and more innovation oriented. It also has a role as informing the members of the association. Uh, simply, we do not want to be a newsletter, but now and then we have something like an interview or a report in it, which is a bit coming to that. Capacity development and supporting governments and businesses. Policies are the other aims. But then to the main developments in official statistics. And topics, of course, are very time dependent. Health, climate change, economy, well-being. If you talk about the situation now, of course, there's a lot of COVID-related, pandemic-related issues. There are a lot of issues which are, for example, in Europe now about energy and uh, gas and those kind of issues, defense uh, spending. 
these are issues that also come back into the field of official statistics. So that's obvious, that we try to follow the developments in societies to see for what is current and what's not. Interesting are, of course, these. And these are the ones which are uh, upcoming and uh, what we see that is coming up. Um, the first bullet should not be there. That makes it a bit uh, change for me. So digitalization and globalization. We see a variety of new data sources. And this uh, data sources, that is really opening, opening a world of new, new chances. Earlier, we had the surveys. And of course, the census, the population census, is the oldest form of a survey. So many of the inferential statistics were based on survey information. But then, slowly, we could use administrative data and registers. Some countries, Norway, Sweden, Finland, they all for a long time have their registers which are open for statistics. But this is now more and more in a lot of Europe and also outside Europe more current. Then, of course, the big data and, of course, the, the medical biochemic researchers, you used to work with big data sets. But big data, for example, in, uh, in, in population statistics or in uh, crime statistics, then you are talking about maybe data sets of 20, 30 million. But now we are working with even bigger, bigger, bigger data because of all kinds of sensors. If you're talking about agricultural statistics, then we are more and more working with sensors, which the farmers have in measuring a lot of things in their agricultural environment. So sensor statistics, filling in data, big data sets are becoming more important. Citizens' data. You have a lot of data around you. Where do you do your shopping? How do you travel? What kind of kilometers are you making, et cetera? This is all citizens' data. And of course, more and more by using machine learning, by using artificial intelligence, data gaps can be filled by already using algorithms to calculate certain data. Um, open data is a very important one, uh, it was mentioned more and more, but if you're talking about open data in the context of official statistics, we're talking about, for example, a population census data set, where your and your and your and your information is there, your age, your whatever, your income, some other characteristics. So we are talking about how to deal with confidentiality and access to the data. And of course, uh, a statistical producer tries to aggregate the data because on the aggregated level it becomes important. But if you make the data open, then you also have to give access to the basic data and then you're entering into this confidentiality field. More complex and an integrated production process. Um, Statistics is based on a backbone of agreed standards, recommendations, guidelines. These have been developed over the last 50, 60 years. The best one is the system of natural accounts, which is a big book of definitions and methods to calculate, for example, the gross domestic product of a country. It's all fixed. Fixed in the sense that it can be done, or it should be done by each country in the same way to lead in the end, to comparative and to comparable statistics. But this is more and more integrated because of the variety of data sets that we have and the multiplicity of applications. So what we also have, and this is a bit more specific for official statistics, is that uh, policy making is more and more based, at least in Europe and in the Western world based on evidence. So if you think in the context of Europe, for example, the Maastricht criteria, they are very, very hard indicators. And they have to be calculated in a way that no one really can compete the, the values of a country. And therefore, all those standards and guidelines are in fact set by law. So the system of national accounts the European system of accounting, for example, is a European law. A country has to work around this law. If they don't, like they did in Greece a couple of years ago, then they get penalized. So one of the rules of statisticians is also sometimes to be a kind of police officer to check if the laws are cor to be correctly followed. Then we have a group of favorites, or we are, as official statistics, a favorite competitor. Of course, there are the market research firms. Uh, GFK, for example, is a big one. 
And they collect also often quite similar information. But they cannot guarantee the quality system that is made by the International Association or which is made by the official statistics fundamental principles. So GFK produces consumer confidence data, but if you want to have them as official statistics, then they have to come from the National Statistical Institutes. That makes that the National Statistical Institutes have as providing a public good a kind of, uh, a kind of preferred position. Um, more and more the organizations are becoming knowledge, are becoming from knowledge factories to um, innovative expertise centers. The cooperation with the academics has improved during the last 20 years. So if you also look to the cooperation in manuscripts, often, I, I think almost 30% of the manuscripts in the journal, there you can see some people who are working in a national or an international statistical office, working together or working themselves part-time also in an academic environment, or also working in a policy environment. So we have a lot of people that work in one or two or three of the fields. The last one is uh, a very recent development that more or less came up with the pandemic, that there were, within a couple of weeks, a lot of other data providers from the health, from whatever kind of organizations that came up with data about uh, the risk factors of the pandemic, statistics about the pandemic. And it was really a very difficult time for official statisticians to get the food between the door, the door open again to say, if you want to have the official statistics, which are those which are done around certain quality criteria, then you have to come back to our statistics. So this was a struggle for maintaining its authority. So how do these developments uh, impact publishing in official statistics? And I'm um, coming slowly to the end. Um, so the focus has to be uh, on how the complexity and what is uh, analyzed can be kept accessible. So the big variety of domains, the big variety of developments has to be looked at so to say that you can say this is something that we have to publish, this is something that we have to publish. Um, we have not a high rejection rate. I think it's about uh, 25, 30% Saskia and Kim, they know. But, um, we have a lot of papers where you have to look at what is now really what the author has done to make this part of society, this part of how uh, societal issues relate to each other, relevant for policy making. And uh, how can we pick out not this kind of nano sentence that says uh, A causes B, but how can uh, other policy makers or other decision makers use the information that comes from this specific manuscript? Um, the population in general is more and more statistical literate than many, many years ago. My generation, we learned about statistics. But if you talk about people who are now 30 or 40 years old or people who are younger, they grew up with these type of machines. They are thinking differently. And they think much more in, I just Google it. And that way of looking into data makes that statistics are more and more used very widely by everyone, every day, every moment in time. So we have to be sure that the data are fit also for those users, that someone can indeed use the data via interactive or whatever kind of measures via its, uh, its iPhone. Uh, the accessibility, uh, where we have to find the balance between confidentiality and accessibility of the information, uh, where um, confidentiality of individuals, but also of businesses, is of course a very high and very important issue. And then the many modes that we have to use uh, in parallel, uh, survey data, administrative data, big data, citizens data, etc., to work with. So what does it need to stay then in the forefront? So my advice to, uh, to the EOS strategy and maybe to uh, EOS to look into um, how should this uh, journal develop. Reading is more and more clicking and browsing. Um, it would be interesting to see how many of the readers of the statistical journal read a manuscript from the first to the last letter. I think a lot of them will look there, look there, look into a graph, look into a table, and they want to have the 
the, the, the information which is back to that specific table. So you need to combine the reading of the, the facts and the reading of the impacts with allowing people to play with it. Interactive data, putting it in a map, play with the map, play with the timeline to see how this change changes. So you have to combine effects in the near future. The paper version, okay, but then the online version. And in the online version, there should be links to the data sets which are behind the online version. And the data sets which are there should be open data. They should also allow, they should be pinned at a certain moment, but allow the people to play with the data, to check if they, analyzing it, might find other information which is valid. Easy access, and there I think the, uh, the keywords uh, will become very important. Uh, and um, more and more to combine and integrate the different fields and to make it more easy to learn from a lot of um, developments in different, uh, different domains. And then quality and uniqueness, where the process should, beyond, should go beyond reading and commenting. And uh, that a reviewer, or at least also the emphasis editors, should be more knowledgeable about the, the data which are behind. Um, many data sets are used, and the, the reviewers, they check the, the, the structure of the document, they check the, the, the logic, they check if the methods are indeed the methods that should be used, is all the metadata information, are the conclusions um, in, in balance with the hypothesis, is the conceptual model complete, but they should also include, and that is done not enough, they should also include what is the data and can we have a look at the data? Is it indeed that this data set has the quality that it should have to deliver this kind of um, official statistics and deliver trustful information? Um, I'm not sure what and how we have to deal with this, uh, but these are some thoughts about how the developments in official statistics publications could go. Thank you very much. Thank you.